The honeymoon phase is over for the Galaxy Watch 3, and honestly, this is a pretty nice watch, not only in terms of just fashion, but also health and fitness. So starting off with the design, as you can see, this is the watch face that I have been using for the time being. And honestly, it just feels like an enhanced watch, an enhanced traditional watch. Um, I really like the circular design. Um, I'm coming from a Fitbit and I have used the Apple Watch as well. And those typically have the boxy design. You do get a little bit more real estate with those screens, which is why I think people prefer having that. I will also say the rotating dial is satisfying and it's kind of like a different implementation of the digital crown from the Apple Watch. Although I do like the implementation better on the Watch 3 just because it's just more satisfying to me just hearing those clicks. So next I want to talk about the display a little bit with the watch faces. There are a lot of options you can choose from and right now you can tell that it's off because the screen dims down a little bit and it just gives you less of your complications. Also, now that I have a Galaxy phone, I can take a picture and I can match my outfit. So I'm gonna go ahead and change real quick. All right, so what you wanna do is once you're inside the wearables app, you wanna to go to watch faces. You wanna click on the customizable one that you can do. You want to click on camera, lots of blue. Okay. And then you just select the portion of the outfit that you want. As you can see, there's a lot of blue. Now, one thing I want to mention is no matter what color you choose from, all these designs are gonna be the same. So if I were to go to the top left, as you can see, the colors are a little bit different, but the designs are all the same. So I really like the zigzag one or the one with a lot of lines. So it's gonna take a couple seconds to change once you hit the save button, but you also can select the complications as well. I already have the standard standard ones that I always use. And there we go. My watch face has changed. So that's one really nice benefit that I think really caters towards people who are buying this watch in terms of fashion because, I mean, if you want something, your watch face to always match your outfit and how quick it is, I think it's really cool that Samsung has implemented this inside their watch three. So I give them a pretty big thumbs up for this feature. All right, so next up, I wanna talk about notifications on the Watch 3, and trust me, you can get a lot of them, especially if you are a very popular person in your social life. Um, but for me, I turn them all off except for phone calls and messages, um, just because I don't really like having um, my wrist to be buzzing all the time. If it's that important, um, a person's probably gonna reach out to me through a phone call or a text message. I do think if you leave the notifications all on that your battery life is going to take a massive hit just because this thing is going to be buzzing all the time. And there are three unique modes you can silence this with. So the first one I wanna talk about is do not disturb, probably one of my favorite modes. So one nice thing that is really good when you have a Galaxy phone versus when you have an iPhone is that when you pair it with your Galaxy phone, when you turn your phone on Do Not Disturb, your watch also goes on Do Not Disturb. So I think that's a really nice feature that they implemented. So good night mode. And the, I really like this mode, but the one big caveat that I don't like and I think Samsung should fix is the auto, de auto detection. I don't like how you have to manually enable good night mode because the nice thing about this is that it's pretty much the same thing as do not disturb but it also turns off your watch face as well you have to like the wrist the wrist gesture you have to physically press the button if you want to see the watch face um, but i think samsung should probably implement something that you know maybe when it shows that your heart rate is lowered and at a steady rate and um, you know, there's not much movement going on that automatically puts it on good night mode so you're not getting disturbed while you're asleep. The other feature is theater mode, which I don't think a lot of people are using right now, at least in America, because theaters are closed. Actually, I think AMC recently opened, but um, this basically just makes your watch non-existent. Um, so you don't get any notifications, no alarms, and the watch face is completely blank. So it's basically as if you didn't take your watch into the theater in the first place. Um, so those are three modes in terms of silencing or I guess pulling back on the notifications that you get. But you can also take phone calls on this thing and as well as reply to messages. 
Um, I would probably say the best way to reply to messages is di through dictation, so talking to your watch. Um, but for people that were bur that burned, for people who were born, you know, in the 90s, 80s, um, they do have T9. So if you are really good at typing on this keyboard, and yes, I was born in the 90s, I can use T9. It's it was honestly a really kind of nostalgic seeing that keyboard and how. I'm still good at typing using a T9 keyboard, but I'm going on a tangent. Um, but for people who can use T9, if you want to type using that um, in terms of mechanics, you can do that. So next up, I want to talk about battery life, which I think is commonly overlooked in the smartwatch category. Although I really think it depends on what type of customer you are. So this watch gets me through the day and that's it. Sometimes into the next, I haven't gotten that far. Usually when it's in the next day, it's like 5%, so it's pretty much dead anyway. So um, if you're a person who just wears their watch for the day, takes it off, you don't really use it for the sleep tracking, then in terms of the battery life, I think you're gonna be pretty happy. I think those are the people who are probably gonna be using it for, you know, more of as like a fashion statement rather than like a health fitness monitoring device. Um, so for people like me who really likes to monitor their health and use other health features on the watch, um, it does get kind of annoying that, you know, right before bed, you're going to have to charge this up because, you know, it's already sitting at probably 15, 10% before you go to sleep and you don't want to go to sleep, potentially have it die, or as soon as you wake up, charge it real quick and then you're on, you know, like 40% for the rest of the day and then it dies on you. So those... That's probably one of the biggest thing I, w I don't like about this watch is the battery life, but I am excited that Fitbit did announce that they have two watches coming out. It's the Versa 3 and the Sense. I'm pretty excited about those. I did pre-order them both, so um, subscribe if you want to see um, the Fitbits that are coming, I think, end of September. Um, but moving on from there, now I want to talk about probably the biggest thing that I love about this watch is the health and fitness tracking because they have a lot of options. So in terms of the amount of information they give you, so I'm also speaking from the perspective of a person who runs primarily as their exercise, they give you a ton, and I mean a ton of information that you can look at when you're running and when you're done running. It also has the ability to auto detect when you're working out, kind of like the Apple Watch. When I was just grocery shopping, walking around the store for like 10 minutes, it was saying, hey, are you working out? And I'm like, no, but you said I'm working out, so I guess. And it just says that um, an auto detection workout has been detected. That was kind of redundant, but um, yeah, that's one of the things that I think are pretty cool, especially coming from this watch, because I know there are some times where I go on a walk and I forget to set that I'm going on a walk and it'll just say, hey, we think that you're working out, you're walking. There you go. So I think that's also a really cool feature that they have enabled. They also do have reminders if you're sitting down too long, that hey, you might wanna get up, stretch, walk a little bit. I think that's also really nice. I think that's pretty much like a staple in smartwatches now. Um, another cool feature in terms of the health tracking is if you go to the gym, you might really like this watch for tracking your workouts. They have so many individual workouts. And while you work out as well, it tells you your heart rate obviously, but more importantly, which zone you are in. I also want to put a disclaimer that I think most people overlook when buying health tracking devices is that this is not an official replacement for a traditional medical device. Like this is not a replacement for, you know, monitoring your heart. You know, if it goes up, it's pretty much like a range of what it thinks it should be at. Although it might be pretty close, it's not the official medical device you should be using to determine your heart rate or determine um, your blood oxygen levels. So starting off is the sleep tracking. Uh, that's pretty much what I love smartwatches for, specifically my Fitbit. So the sleep tracking I think is, it's pretty much on par with the Fitbit. Um, in terms of the REM sleep and the light sleep, it's pretty much like, I would say 15 to 30 minutes off. Um, in the detection of when I fall asleep and when it thinks I wake up, it's pretty much identical. Um, in terms of the score or whatever it wants to give you, I don't really look at that. I look in the more details of the sleep that it's tracking for you. Um, so I think overall, I think it's doing a pretty good job. All right, so next up, I wanna talk about the ECG, which Samsung said isn't available in America, but I mean, come on. 
it's on my watch. When there's a will, there's a way, and I found a way to get it on my watch in America. So kind of like how the Apple Watch is, if you place your finger on the top button for 30 seconds, it will monitor your heartbeat for 30 seconds, and then it will give you back a reading. You can also print it off as a PDF, send it to your doctor. I think it's, like I said, it's not a replacement for your official medical device, but it's just cool seeing that information displayed on your screen. Um, I believe another feature that I don't believe is out yet I believe it's only out in Korea in some places, is the blood pressure monitoring, or your blood pressure. Um, so for this one, I actually can't do a test for you guys because you actually need one of the blood monitor straps to actually you know, cut off the blood circulation a little bit. Um, but they do give you guides on the phone on how to do this. Um, I wish I could show you guys, but I don't feel safe just getting a string and just cutting off my blood circulation and you know applying pressure not applying pressure you know um, but that is nice feature that samsung has implemented inside this watch uh, it would be nice to see uh it would be nice to see this feature but unfortunately you guys can't see it on my channel also blood oxygen level tracking or measurement and that's pretty much just looking up how much oxygen is inside the blood now how accurate this is i don't have an official medical device of tracking oxygen levels so um, mine always shows 99 it never goes to 100%. I think, I don't know if it's supposed to be 100%. So um, if you are, you know, a doctor or someone who knows a lot about blood and oxygen, um, you, got, you can let me know down in the comments below if that's a good thing, if it's supposed to be pretty high. I'm assuming it is supposed to be pretty high because, you know, I breathe in oxygen all the time. There's also a stress check that it does. And my guess, I haven't done any official, like, peer-reviewed, uh, research on heart rate and stress but my guess is depending on how how your heart rate just randomly might ramp up it might say that you're stressed or that your stress is really high um, I didn't really look into this too much because I didn't really find it to be that informational but I guess for people who might be really anxious or you know they might have a lot of anxiety that they can look at their watch see what their stress level is and see hey that I might be a little stressed might need to you know think of some things different to just calm myself down a little bit. There's also heart monitoring, so we can just you know look at your heart rate, see what your resting is, um, look at your current heart rate. You can change it in the settings to be 10 minutes or it can be continuous. Um, just do keep in mind if you do change it to continuous that the watch will drain faster, obviously. And then the last thing that I wanna talk about is women's tracking. I don't have anyone to test this for me, so, um, Women, if you are looking for how good health tracking is on this watch, you might have to go to someone else's channel for that. Sorry. So the final question, do you gotta have it? And here's what I'll say. One more thing I also forgot to note is if you use Spotify or you know just any music in general, you can change the music on this watch and the volume. So that's another nice feature that um, Samsung offered. So going back to what I was originally going to say, um, because of the battery life, here's what I'm going to say, because this also seems what Samsung was marketing this watch as. If you are more fashion first, if you want a more fashionable watch that you can wear and have the expectation for other people to think that you're wearing a regular watch with health tracking on the side, um, then I think that this is a pretty good buy. And I think with the price point starting at $400, that this is a watch that's geared toward, get gears toward the Apple Watch because Apple Watches, as you guys might tell, the latest ones are always ranging from like 350 all the way up to God knows how much. It's a lot. But I do think that this watch is more of a fashion watch first and then a fitness health monitoring second even though it does have it just because of the battery life if it was a little bit longer i would probably recommend this more to people and i do think that if you are in the samsung ecosystem that um, this watch does bring a little bit more benefits just because you are able to sync it with your phone a little bit better when it was with my apple watch or my iphone i did notice that there was a couple features missing kind of how like the do not disturb the wi-fi syncing and the uh, wearables in terms of the watch face being customized to your outfit um 
So I do think that this watch is fashion first, fitness second. So if that's what you have in mind and you're willing to pay 400 plus dollars for a smart watch that I overall think is a pretty good package, then I would say go for it. I think this is a good watch. Although if you're a person who's fitness first, fashion second, that you might want to probably hold off on this watch. So with all that being said, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Let me know down in the comments below if you like this setup, if you are getting the Galaxy Watch or if you've previously had a Gal Galaxy Watch, um, how it has been for you. Um, if you did like this video, please make sure to leave a like or dislike for your feedback. And as always, guys, much love. I can't remember the last time I wore a button down, honestly. I hate, I just like t-shirts. I can't believe I'm stripping on camera, but who cares? Woo!